damage. Take a look right down there. You see those giant warts coming out of the box? It's in better physical condition than the Marantz, but it also had. All right, I subbed in a 10 ohm resistor across the 6.8 ohm resistor that's open. Welcome to Solid State Cinema. Today, I'm operating in the red zone. Reason is, these receivers are way too heavy for me to lug down to the white zone. So what do we have? Two monster Silver Series receivers, a Marantz 2325 and a Pioneer SX980. Both of them are going to require an initial inspection before we attempt power-up. So the question is, will either of them power up safely? So during my inspection, we are going to utilize Robert Mondavi and Commander Spock. Logic should dictate the solution. All right, we'll start our inspection with the Marantz 2325. I was informed that this receiver was purchased and in shipping, she took some damage. If you take a look right down there at the phones jack, you can see it's pushed in. We have a bent corner and a busted off nut. Quite the bummer. Let's see what's going on underside. All right, we'll start at the top of the chassis and sweep our way down. We know that this corner has been damaged. You can see it's pulled away and this aluminum is bent in here. It's one half of the phone jack. The other half is still trapped between the face and the chassis. Super bummer, but that would not stop us from powering up this unit. So of course, anytime there's shipping damage, you have to be super careful and look at everything, inspect boards, make sure that they weren't cracked. You can see that the face is either pitched out or the chassis is pushed in. So to repair that, I'll have to remove that front panel. But the thing that got my attention right off the bat is this goo that I see on this metal rail. And then I looked at the bottom panel and I see the same stuff. I'm like, where did that come from? Well, let's take a look down here at the filter caps. You see those giant warts coming out of the bottom of the filter caps? Yeah, they're leaking and they were able to leak over the chassis and contaminate it. But it does not appear as though it got on any of the circuitry. But because of that, I will not be powering up the Marantz until we get some fresh caps installed. All right, top side sweep. There's the filter caps and their values are 15,000 microfarads at 70 volts. I already have a pair on order. But then if you look over here, at this power supply board that also has the speaker protect relay, we've got a bunch of pregnant caps. So we're going to change all those two before power is applied to the Marantz. So the Marantz is out for power up. All right, now we're going to take a look at the SX980. It's in better physical condition than the Marantz, but it also has those giant filter caps. But good news, I already peeked underneath with a flashlight and there's no signs of sludge, even though these will be replaced if we decide to rebuild the Pioneer. So I'll give you a little history. When it came in, these two fuses were blown and taped to the top of the receiver. So you might think, well, maybe I can just pop in some fuses and flip her on. I think not. We should verify this power supply, make sure we don't have anything shorted before we attempt power on. So let's do that. So since these fuses blew, I'm assuming something on this power supply may be shorted. It could have just been a surge, but usually when a fuse goes, the damage is already done. So I'm going to take my meter on ohm scale. We're just going to go from chassis to each of these fuses and see if we see a short. So here we go with the first fuse. Ooh, one ohm. Two ohms. Two. I'm seeing shorts on every one of these fuses, okay? That's not a good thing. So the first thing that I would look at would be the power supply diodes. If there was a surge, one of these diodes may have shorted and now we're seeing that short through the transformer on all the fuses, okay? So I've got my meter set on diode check. What we're gonna do is start with these big guys over here. Black lead goes to the band and this lead 
We'll go to the other side and what you should see is approximately 0.5 to 0.7 volts. This meter is outputting 1.5 volts and when it activates the junction of a diode it should be around half a volt. Let's we'll see what we got. So look at there. That one appears to be okay. Let's check this guy back here. Uh-oh! Let's check this one. That one tests, but you see that? That voltage is low, but it's creeping up, so that could be the charging of a filter cap. Let's check this one. Uh-oh! Well, for sure we have one diode that's shorted. So before I apply power to the Pioneer, we need to clear the short. So is the Pioneer able to power up? Not yet. All right, I've taken out a few screws. I'm able to pull this board out enough to gain access to the foils of those diodes. But she's a little tight, but the last thing you want to do is force this. So I'm probably going to put something in here to prop the board up and get back there and desolder those guys. We'll put in some fresh diodes and see how things test them. So guess what? I lifted the diode that I thought was shorted, tested it again, and it was fine. So I reinstalled it and I thought, okay, let's flip her on. And look at there. It is powering up. But what I don't hear is that speaker protect relay coming on. So there's still something wrong. Could be a power supply issue, could be, unfortunately, shorted output transistors. That'd be really bad. All right, here is the speaker protect module. So this relay engages when it sees zero volts DC on each speaker output. You can see that somebody's been in here playing around. There's some gouge marks on the plastic. They've been in here playing with the relay, which is not a good thing. But we can check, just flipped around, can actually check the voltages coming off of those speaker lines and see if they are above zero volts DC and that would be the reason that the protect system is not activating because it sees a problem okay so I'm going to take my meter I know this is really difficult to see but it's also difficult to do okay so there's two 75K resistors that meet up and go to this chip. This chip is the mastermind. And when he sees zero volts, he says, OK, relay, turn on. So there's one side. You see negative 0.645. This is coming right off of the output section. And the other 75K is here. We've got the same thing going on. I can't imagine that both output sections have a problem. So at this point, since both channels appear to be sending the same error voltage, I'm not going to condemn a channel. I think maybe we have a power supply issue. There is evidence on that upper board of bad caps. So until I investigate this further, I really can't give you an answer. Well, I got thinking about this power supply module and I thought, you know what, I should take a better look at the solder connections because a lot of things on the top looked overheated. So I do see several cold solder joints. I really can't get in here enough to show you what's going on, but I'm going to go ahead and re-solder those and let's see if the protect relay pops on. So with things in the position they are, it's hard for me to show you what I'm seeing on the meter versus what's going on on this board. But I just soldered these two transistors, the leads were cracked, as well as a few diodes behind it. There is a 6.8 ohm resistor that goes to this transistor. And when I'm measuring that guy, I'm getting about 1.6 meg. Here is another 6.8 ohm resistor. And that one's right on the money. So that resistor opened up. I'm thinking maybe there was a current event when these bad connections occurred. Pop the resistor. So let's change it and see if the power supply comes back to life. All right, I subbed in a 10 ohm resistor across the 6.8 ohm resistor that's open. I've got 70 volts on both sides. 
no smoke but yet the receiver is still not happy obviously all the problems are on the power supply board alright so far our results are illogical that's because I don't have enough information yet to tell you what's wrong with the Pioneer my guess somebody's been inside of that relay they may have physically damaged the coil there may be a power supply issue there could be one of the output channels that has drifted bias wise but I'm not gonna know until I investigate this further so in the meantime you gotta wait for the next solid state cinema